Hi, I'm Rob with Skid Street Genius, and today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to troubleshoot our CAN bus controllers. These are the controllers that made us famous. They're meant to plug into a Bobcat, and inside each one of these is a, a little microcontroller, and what it does is it delivers power out on the output. So when you touch a button inside the cap, it gives you a 12-volt 12, 12 switch connection at the output. They come in a variety of different styles. We've got a one-channel, a two-channel, a four-channel, and a six-channel. So today I'm just going to go through step by step how to troubleshoot them and how to get them up and going on your for your particular application. So starting with the single channel controller, if you look inside you'll see two pins. One's ground and one's hot. The hot is only switched on when you send a signal from what we, we call our B1 or B2 buttons. What I'm going to do is look farther into the video and you'll see how we how we label a button inside the different uh, the different machines. There's two styles of buttons inside Bobcats. What you see here is pilot control, but there's also the hand, uh, hand foot controls, and the buttons are slightly different in those. So right now I have the key on. I don't have, the, have to have the machine running. I just line up these two lines here, connect it. You're going to see it go through a little startup sequence where it starts flashing. Okay, and what that's telling me is I've got power connected, as well as when it's flickering like that, that tells me that I've got a uh, digital signal. A digital signal means that it's talking to the bus of the of the Bobcat and it's looking for a command control. So right now you just see it flickering. If I reach up and I touch my B1, it latches it on so I get a solid red. What it's doing now is it enables me to take my hand off the controls, operate my hydraulics so that if I'm operating a single solenoid, I'm able to get in there and move that, uh, move the flow either forward or reverse without actually touching anything. If I touch the button again, my B1, it releases it and it goes back to a flickering state. If I reach at the bottom, which is B2, and hold it and let go, see what happens? It's a momentary connection. Now, if there's a problem with these, if this comes up with no light when you plug it in, then what that means is I've got no power. And there's, there's got to be a reason for that. So what I do is I get in here and I put a meter across pins 1 and 3. Now, Inside these connectors, I'll give you a, a close-up shortly, but inside these connectors, there's three power pins, so there's a ground and two power, and then there's four CAN bus pins. And how you can tell them apart is the bigger pins are the power pins, the smaller pins are the signal pins. And they're labeled 1, 2, 3, and then A, B, C, D. So it's very simple, and it's actually labeled on the front of these. So just look farther in the video, and you'll see the close-ups of this as well. And then literally, I just plug this in, and what ends up happening is it gets... It's a little flicker, tells me, okay, I'm talking to the bus, I'm getting power and I'm ready to go and I'm ready to do some work. I reach up and I touch it, and there. So this is a fully functional controller. I've even got a little tester that I made up here. Oh, no, that's for the other ones. Cut. Okay, the next one is the two channel. It's also called the CB2000, and it just stands for two, CAN bus 2000, and it's a two channel. If you look inside here, you see the connector has got four pins. And what we did was we split the grounds on this, but you can common the ground up if you want. But the lower pins are the ground pins, the upper pins are the control pins. Same thing as with the other controllers, I plug it in. Now I'm connected to the bus, you'll see a quick flicker amber and then it starts flickering green. That tells me I've got power and I've got a data connection. I reach up and I touch B1 and it locks. I touch B1 again and it lets go. If I touch B2, it's momentary. I can let go and release. Now, if I go over to C1, I touch it, and now I get a solid green. Okay, I let go. Now it starts flickering again. I reach down, touch C3, or C2, sorry. Now you see it working here. See, I can hold it, I let go, hold it, let go. Go back to B1, you see how it turns red. So on B1, if I touch the B side, I get red. If I touch the the C side, I get green. So that's what differentiates the two. Okay, so this one's perfectly operational and ready to put into service. Again, I do have a tester. You want to see it actually activate something. Okay. Okay, so that just proves it all out. But really, this LED is, is connected over the output, so it gives you the same indication as if I had an external load.
Okay, so now we'll move on to the next one. Okay, next one is the four channel. This is a CB4014. What this stands for is it's a four channel and it's got a 14 pin embedded into the output of this. What you'll notice here is there's a ground, there's four control pins, which are operated by the, by the machine controls, and there's a K pin. What the K pin is, is a constant on key power. So if you've got an external attachment that needs something like maybe laser receivers or something that requires constant power when you turn the key on, then you, you pin your attachment into the K-pin. K-pin is a universal standard for almost all machines except for Caterpillar and Jump. Now we're going to plug this one in. This one is a little different as being that the LED is on the back side. So as soon as I plug it in, I get an amber. Then I get a little green to tell me there's power. And then that green starts flickering. Okay, if that green's flickering, that tells me that I'm connected to the bus. I've got power and everything's running. So now if I touch a C1 or a B1, get red, B2, C1, C2. Okay, so that's my indicator that everything's working fine. This controller is also um, can be reprogrammed. Uh, there's a sequence. You just look in the manual. Um, I'll, maybe I'll do a, a, a video just on doing that. But basically what it entails is you just hold the button down that you want to be latched on, turn the key on and off. And what it'll do is it'll make two of the channels latch on. So you can have it like it is on some of the other controllers where you touch a button and it stays on. So when you take your hand off, it's still on. And then you touch it again and it turns it off. But they ship without that feature. So you actually have to turn that on through the software controls. Otherwise, they just come with momentary controls. But now you can see this one's ready to go. It's still flickering. That means it's live, the bus is active, and it's talking to the machine. So this one is perfectly ready to go. Troubleshooting on these, if you get an amber or no light. And that, that goes for all of the, the different controllers. If you turn it on and you see it flicker a couple of times and then it goes to amber, that means it's not communicating with the bus. That can be a couple of different things. I've had it, I've had it where these connectors get damaged. I've had on some of the older machines where the cables are on the outside, the cable gets worn and starts to open up on it so that you've got a bad connection there. I've had it where the Bobcat techs, they plug their laptops into these machines when they service them. And so what they'll do is on the back connection, and I'll show you that later, but on that back connection, they plug their laptops into there. When they plug it back in again, they don't plug it in properly and it screws up the connection. And that causes us to either have no power or no bus here. Um, and then that's it. So. If you don't have an L indicator, if you have an amber, it means you've got no bus here. If you've got no indication, it means you've got no power. I have the 4014 connected to an external load. We use E, F, G, and H on this controller. Uh, and that corresponds to our B1, B2, C1, C2. The reason we do that, if we use the toggle on the left-hand stick, some of the machines, if you don't have updated software on them, what will happen is it will reverse the pump on you and that causes all kinds of problems. So we just kind of stay away from that. Later models, uh, we plan on having a way of controlling that, and that's in the 6000s, and that's a completely different software package and, and hardware package to make that work. So anyways, this is the four channel. Here we go with our external load. Okay, just showing that once again. I'm pushing B1, which is the top of the top. B2, C1, C2. Okay, now last but not least is our 6000 series. This is a six output controller. It uses A1, A2, B1, B2, and C1, C2. Same thing, plugs into our seven pin CAN bus. You see the green light flickering. That tells me that I've got a bus connection when you see that flicker. And what this green light tells me is that I've got power. So of course, if I'm missing power, I won't get this, but I could have power and no bus connection here. So you just always want to watch for that if you're having a problem. I'm going to ex connect my external load this time. So you can see it operate fully. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll start with my toggle here, which is A1, A2, B1, C1, C2. Okay, and that runs the whole gamut. That gives me six functions. Again, as you watch the box here, it even gives you an indicator. So you can see each one of these toggling. 
as I run through the controls. Okay. So you've got a really good indication on the box if there's any kind of problems. Generally, the problems are wire related. You know, the cables are on the outside of the machines, things hit them, water, corrosion, all kinds of things happen to these. So you always want to be trying to maintain them. When I don't use them, I just take them and put them in my shop. That's the best thing you can do. If you're not using the, any of these controls, just take them off and put them in the shop. Don't store them on the boom of the machine. Let it sit out in the Texas sun all summer long. Just take the thing off. It's expensive. Take it off and go put it inside your shop and you'll be good to go. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run through some troubleshooting in the machine just to kind of give you an idea of what I do when I, don't, when I have a problem with any of my attachments. And it's not just our CAN bus controllers. I've run 14 pins forever. I've run all different types of controls. Uh, I always start with my power. If there's any kind of problem, I'm just going to show you how that works. Okay, I'm just going to talk about the controls here. This is my left stick on a pilot controlled machine. This is A1. This is A2. B1. B2. Come over to the right stick. C1. C2. This corresponds to, on this side, this is my C, D, E, F, G, H. That's what it corresponds to on the pin out on the 14 pin. I have a problem where it appears that I've got a power issue. I want to come down here. And I want to come down to this fuse box and I want to pull the ACD fuse. And that's what I want to inspect and make sure that it's up and going. Because if that fuse is blown, I lose all the power to my, to my connections for my attachment. Okay, so when I have problems, what I want to do is I come back here and I look for this connection right here. It's normally connected right on this little pillar. And how you can tell it apart is if you look deep inside here, here's kind of the, the spinal cord of the machine coming out. It's got all kinds of connections on it and there's this connector. The seven pin connection is this smooth connector. I also have an old installation of a 14 pin here and you'll see if it was installed, you'd, there'd be this Y connected and you would have this fiber connector here, or the fiber cable. So, and I've got that out of the way because I only run the seven and I run my super controller for all my other controls. So, right here, if you look, this is really easy. You just push this in and it comes apart. You look up, up inside it and it's got really fine pins and I'll just show you that. Pins are, so if they're not perfectly aligned when it gets pushed back together, and why would it come apart? Is the technicians plug into this connector whenever they work on your machine. So if, they're, if you send it in for regular service, they'll plug their laptop into it and they'll run diagnostics and they'll upgrade your software and they do it through this port right here. And when they plug it all back in together, if they even do, sometimes they completely forget, and that's happened many, many times. Uh, what they could do is get this on a little bit of a side here and they'll push one of these pins in and they're really easy to push in on an angle. And so it will lose its connection and that'll, that'll cause you to lose all of your function of your attachments. So you always want to double check that and make sure, especially after it comes back from service, make sure that this is all fixed. Twenty ten, when I finally pulled the trigger, because I actually bought this machine, and uh, they sent me all the cabling on the outside of the boom, and I was absolutely torqued. So I went to went to work and started just designing all my own controls to uh, put onto all the different attachments that we were operating, and tried to do it as effectively and uh, cost efficiently as we possibly could. So that's why all of these different ones uh, have been released, all with different price points just to uh, make it as inexpensive as we possibly could for customers. Along the way, there's been a couple of people, companies uh, have bought these, copied them, done a really bad job of it. What we'd really hope is that people would help to support us and, and continue on uh, with our research into this because our goal is to, is to help you, the customer, make sure that you're always able to interface all the different machines to the attachments. I always take these calls uh, through the forums on our website where people are, are pleading for a, a new application to be to be settled and I take those jobs on and how we how we're able to fund that is 
people buying these different uh, controls from us and not going to the competitors that basically just steal all of, all of, uh, all of our ideas. So we hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some insight as to what you, what you need for your application. If you still have questions, please contact us through our form on our website and we'll be happy to get back to you.